There are a lot of these like trad conservative people who hate like these right-leaning like manosphere people. And it's funny to kind of like watch them fight a little bit. A kid that's not there. Well, unknowing or knowing? Not knowing. I'm not knowing. So how did they get the statistic? I don't know. It's DNA test. Much like the oh, feminist- Oh, she did pull it from that. Oh my God. She really thinks one out of five men? How could you be that retarded? She thinks one in five men are raising a child that's not theirs and they don't even know it? Especially considering she's on her dad's dime. Number one, I'm sorry I'm not a brokey. My dad yells at me for accounting every month and I have to like organize like business expenses versus personal. Pearl reminds me of Pearl from SpongeBob asking her dad, Mr. Krabs, for money. <laughs> I'll do the full twirl. This dress looks like a trash bag. Meet some nice high value guy. He looks at her with a straight face telling her she's going to meet a high value guy in the to be racist and my staff actually did not find him to be racist wait he so. was talking to an italian girl next to you mm -hmm. and saying that she shouldn't have a black boyfriend he he doesn't believe in see i don't really want to go into like the race mixing stuff yeah. too much no but, but you just said he wasn't being racist and i watched him be racist on your show well i mean to me he says the same things that like like, there's a lot of people that think like that when... But it doesn't make it less racist just because other people think it. Uh, he was really polite. He showed up on time. Like, we just... Yeah. He, he also... And, and, I, and honestly, he did a panel and he spoke about his opinions on race mixing and a lot of people agreed with him. Okay, but that doesn't change whether it's racist or not, right? But what I'm getting to... Do you to... think it's racist to like... Because I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. Do you think it's Go racist on. like if I'm Irish and I say I want to date someone that's Irish? Do you think that's racist? No, but if I say to you, you're Irish, therefore you shouldn't date a black man, that is racist, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just... When he was talking, he was talking about how he wanted to date an Italian woman. Like, he even said he wouldn't want to date a British girl, he'd want to date an Italian woman. So no, he's he allowed to date. to date who he wants. Yeah. Like him telling your <laughs> Italian friend she shouldn't be dating a black man, mm. that's right, the racist part. <laughs> Jesus. Where's the Venti video? Oh, that man. All right, you gotta go, man. You gotta go. Right, it's a you wild. gotta go. You're wild. Right. But there are 10K viewers. <laughs> 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 this is the clip of Fuentes talking to that Italian woman. I don't. Wow. I really don't. I, I don't. I don't wish luck to racists. Oh, Ooh. I'm not racist. Uh, yes, you are. Yes, you are, Nick. Yeah, I am a little bit yeah, racist. But <laughs> listen, but it's not because I hate people. I love people. It's just <clears throat> race is real. Race is real. Race is a part of us. So, hey, it is what it is. And um, the Italians, we do not claim you. Oh, oh, hey, the Italians don't claim you. You're the one dating a black guy. The Italians don't claim me. They don't claim you. Oh, no, they claim me. They claim me. I don't think so. They do. Italian guys, yeah. Italian, Tell an Italian big, guy about lovers. your affinity for black guys. That'll go over real well. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Nick. Maybe some brajol. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a attack. Destiny, you finally bitch. Read the Discord article. It's hot, you lazy game. Wait, what Discord article? What is the Discord article? Did you send me an article on Discord? Or what are you talking about? RTBA lol. No. You have it open, you stupid fuck. Are you talking about the documents? The secret, the, this, is this the Discord article? Is that how you would refer to it as a normal person? Did you see the Discord article that came out? This might be your platform, but respect okay, people when they come okay, to your platform. Okay, okay, goodbye. Go, go, go. go. Yeah. Cool, everyone, bro! Don't call me, bro! Don't so call that's me, bro. why she's angry! Get, get out. Get out. Get the, get the, get the, get the out of my apartment. Get out. That clip you just watched is of Hannah Pearl Davis, a 26-year-old YouTuber, the latest addition to the Manosphere, often referred to as the female Andrew Tate. Pearl runs a YouTube channel centered around the Manosphere, hosting some of the classiest women our society has to offer. Right, let's go there. You want to go back in the past and embarrass yourself again? Do you want to scream? Go is this what again. you want? Let's screaming. go! Pearl's channel is heavily inspired by Kevin Samuels and Fresh and Fit. Women in general, especially in the United States, England, whatever it may be, are not held accountable for their poor decisions. Men are trash. That's common in society, right? Women are trash isn't. 
Men are held accountable all the time, every day. All these women are born with value. They're pretty already. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. Women are born with value. Men must create their value. A guy doesn't lose his value just because he picks the wrong woman once. Just if men are attracted. Did I don't remember watching this on stream or off stream? Did we watch the video where Pearl like copies like fucking twenty of her questions from another dude? <laughs> Holy shit! Attracted to youth, beauty, and fertility. It's been that way since the beginning of time. Hold on, I don't think I watched this on stream, did I? Did we watch it on stream? Oh, maybe we did. Okay, never mind. That guy said we watched it, so we watched it. Men, men value purity and youth. Look at your Twitter Purity, DM. youth, beauty. You can really get those brain juices flowing. I added you on Discord, you my dude. to yet another episode of the groundbreaking discussion, What's Wrong with Modern Women? Which are about as thought-provoking as an episode of Jerry Springer. Or alternatively, if that gets boring, you can tune into an episode of Why Men Cheating is Actually Okay. Right, men really have to work to become attractive. That's why I laugh at y'all when you tell me, well, men shouldn't cheat and they shouldn't do this. Men have to bust their ass to become attractive to even be seen. What if a woman cheats? Can men accept that? <laughs> she belongs to the street. You don't think it's different for men and for women cheating? No. I actually think that like women like to be cheated on. But Pearl didn't always have these takes. In fact, she used to say the polar opposite, especially about Fresh and Fit, who she is now emulating. I know a lot of girls that actually waited until they were married and stayed a virgin until they were married. And I can tell you that the guys on Fresh and Fit podcast would never, they would never be able to pull a girl like that. It's interesting Damn. considering that Pearl's current branding revolves around telling women that their standards are too high and that Wait, how old if you is want that a high value man that you have to tolerate him cheating. Ignore People the bear, think your I'm peril. condoning cheating. People think I'm encouraging cheating. No. Like, I think if a woman cheats, she's trying to leave you. If a man cheats, yes, yes, he's yes. just like, he's it's like, up. it's like a handshake. Yeah. <laughs> Women act like this is the most unforgivable thing that he is the ultimate bad guy, the ultimate demon. If he does this, I'm sorry. Sometimes you contributed to it. And women take no accountability for that. And that he wants to go to the bar with his buddies because you make that shit a hell hole because you are so unpleasant to be around. And that man forgives you for all of that shit, but you can't forgive him for stepping out once, twice. <sighs> you guys are, you guys are crazy. Uh, it's just a little cheating. No biggie. I think it's safe to say that Pearl has changed her business plan in order to make money off of the manosphere because people's opinions don't normally change so drastically in morality, especially in such a short amount of time. Now me, I'm not selling anything. Based on what I know through observation, her particular target audience is a male. This is where Pearl's content and marketing sits. She is constantly hitting pain points and triggers. The challenges and the pain points for her particular customer, client, and fan is not being heard, not being seen, not feeling valued, and not having access to women. So she talks about this constantly, right? And she's talking to women, right? Women which this particular customer, client, or fan does not have access to and wants access to. One way to draw in this particular customer is to continue to hit this customer's pain point over and over and over. And What's up with those modern women? Am I right, boys? Pearl even talks about this business plan in an interview with Yahoo News saying that she didn't know what her business would be yet, but basically that she wanted to be an influencer and build a brand. The plan? Make money off of single men on YouTube by regurgitating their talking points about women back to them as a woman. I feel like when men love women, it's like it's like women have more conditions for them to be like really in love. For a man to love a woman, she does not have to jump as through as many hoops and meet as many requirements as for a woman needs to love a man. Just like Fresh and Fit, Pearl spouts a lot of the same double standards that promote sociopathy, especially in teaching men to have destructive behaviors. Most men always get looked upon like they're not a hoe. Why is it different well, for women than it is for men? It's easy for us to get sex and men getting sex is hard mm -hmm. so if they do what's hard it's mm -hmm. valued if we do what's easy it's not i am so enlightened by pearl teaching us how being a man will magically eliminate all of the consequences of cheating you know like breaking your trust with your partner you were kidding yesterday right you know deleting a file doesn't overwrite it with zeros right i'm just too autistic to understand the sarcasm no one actually believes it right wait when you delete a file on a computer my understanding is it's basically there's like a little mini it's kind of like whiteout except for hard drives that it basically just like wipes 
that area of the drive a little bit. That's why that's why drives typically don't have like a huge life, especially if you're writing and deleting information over and over again. Is because when you keep wiping away all the shit, the ability for it to even have like the zeros and ones etched into it, like slowly fade away, right? Because it's kind of like polishing down like a hard surface. Eventually, when you scratch it, it's gonna break, you know. Partner by lying to them, getting another woman pregnant that you now have to support, humiliating your wife causing family dysfunction and bringing home disease. For man yes. yes. It's like a handshake. That is one hell of a handshake, Pearl. <laughs> and promoting promiscuity is a great way to help create the single moms that her podcast actively speaks out against. Their amazing right. strategy is they don't want to pass on resources to another man's kid. Like okay. that's why that's why they're repulsed by hoes. That's why they're they're repulsed by like other people's children. If single motherhood should be avoided, then perhaps Pearl should consider not contributing to the problem. But Deletion happens in two phases. When a file is deleted, that region something marked as writable. I don't know what you mean by that. If you're deleting a file, you're deleting it from the hard drive, right? Deleting implies it's like getting basically wiped out, you know? How could you delete a 10 gigabyte file in 10 seconds? What do you mean? It's easier to erase a line of text than to write it, of course. by promoting promiscuity to her male audience. If you're smart like Fresh and Fit or Pearl, you can just reframe promoting sociopathy to men as advocating for them, even if the only thing it does is promote dysfunction and make more men lonely by fear-mongering them about relationships. I feel like a lot of men have a good reason for, yeah. for avoiding marriage today. I love it. And so even, and even um, you can, a woman can seize your assets, if, even if you're just living together. It varies from state to state. I know the chat. But it's like if she leaves her stuff at your apartment for like a period of three months, she can literally seize your assets. We are just warning you of what female nature is. You're probably wondering by now, where is Pearl's ring? Well, I'm here to inform you that Pearl is single and unmarried at 26 years old. And the reason I decided to go to therapy is because um, in the next like five to seven years, ideally, you know, um, some things are out of your control, but ideally I'd like to be married. Which according to her is because she is too picky. You're single over a certain age, you're probably too picky. And I say that- Notice when you delete a file, you're only telling the hard drive you can replace that section with another file. It doesn't actually delete it. It's actually deletes something you need to replace with ones and zeros, like the program dband, for example. What are you talking about? If if you want to replace a file, you can like move a file from one folder to another. That'll like replace stuff. Or maybe, are you talking about like, okay, hold on, I think I understand. If you're talking about replacing a file, you mean like, if you delete a file and like name another file like the same name, will it go? Because I think I'm pretty sure like the hard drive like alphabetically organizes like where it goes, right? Like if you've got like one gigabyte of space, it's like what? Um, isn't it like 40 megabytes or four, whatever per, per each letter of the alphabet or something? I don't know. But it's because she's too picky so, because she claims that 28 years old is pretty old to be getting married. What do men value? Third thing men value, youth. How are they getting youth? when the average age of first marriage for women in the US is 28.6 years old. Are you trolling? I work on computers for a living. You understand I'm a streamer, right? Like for all the knowledge that you gain working OBS, you're basically like a third or fourth year comp sci student. You understand that in order to do my job, right? If you wanna come in and argue about it, then hop into Discord and we can chat. Pearl is lucky if she can get married by 28 years old because she's 26 and even if she met Mr. Wright today, you would still usually have to be engaged for at least a year and then usually people, if they're going fast, wait another year before getting married, putting her at 28 years old if they're going fast by today's standards. And Pearl doesn't have much long-term experience in dating either. According to this interview on Yahoo News and what Pearl said online about her dating experiences on various podcasts she's only had a couple of boyfriends if you can do the math of her being 23 in the yahoo interview they couldn't have been that long considering she just turned 26 in the past couple of months and that got me interested in knowing who is pearl picking considering that anytime a guy does something wrong no matter what it is she tells women to simply just pick better okay so then you pick guys that cheat i discovered that last year pearl tweeted about a breakup she had so i decided to go ahead and check the archives and it turns out that pearl actually got catfished by an obese man with two children on tiktok baby when did we start dating yep 
That's right, an obese man with two children on TikTok. And I point out that he's obese because Pearl is constantly dunking on fat girls. Why do I need to look at your roles? And then I have to go on social media, then boom, whale. Boom, another whale. The cherry on top is that Pearl has been pretty adamant about men having children being a deal breaker for her. For me personally, I don't, I'm not into the guys with kids. That's not my thing. Instead of immediately breaking up with him for hiding two whole children from her, she instead takes him in to live with her and her family to mooch off of them. Because he, you know, he was homeless when I first met yeah. him. So I like moved him into my parents' house yeah. so he could get an ID. Too. Yeah. And so my so parents put him. him like on our lease. Aww. So that was how like, Jesus. and they like moved him in for like, he lived with us for like a month. Meanwhile, Pearl is out here humble bragging about her bagging a rich one on podcasts. Oh, he, he was a millionaire. Like, it was just like, he he didn't know what to do with it. How did you never millionaire? He was on social media and I saw he lived like kind of close to me. And so I made like videos saying like, oh, we should like hang out. What? Like, have you never seen those videos of girls like shooting their shots at guys? No. Like, publicly? I was on TikToks and I did a video saying, you know, when he's not doing this like comedic bit, he's actually kind of kind of fine. Like, I live in Chicago. You live in Chicago. We should like hang out. I am pretty confident that Pearl is referring to her ex, Wanya, in these instances because Wanya is from Chicago, like the millionaire ex she talks about in the video. There are multiple articles saying that Wanya was homeless when he was around 22 years old. There's a small chance that I'm wrong, but it seems that the story does match up. I do find it funny that Pearl dating Wanya, or people know him as Angry Reactions, was framed as her bagging a rich one. Meanwhile, he actually moved on to date a more attractive redhead, and she's still single and unmarried. Jesus. It seems like her advice on lowering her standards to get married isn't working out so well for her. Pearl has the absolute audacity to tell women to pick better when she literally got catfished by some girl's obese baby daddy on TikTok. Talk. Yeah, he has a lot of followers, but he ended up having to mooch off of her anyway, so. Not only does she regularly dunk on obese people, even taunting them in her TikTok bio before she got banned, but Pearl will even put all the blame on women for obesity in America, despite half the obese population in America being men. How can Pearl dunk on fat girls so often, considering that she has clearly neglected her own self-care? This video of her is only from one month ago, and it might surprise you to learn that she's a professional athlete. Oh no. And despite her lack of self-care, she still likes to spout a lot of statistics about fat women, despite being corrected on this Jesus by Destiny Christ. on her live stream. There's a lot of fat people. Fat no, people women, stay with women, fat people. But women by and large are fatter than men. No. Women, and if you go in the U.S., the woman's always fatter. BMI. So in the U.S., the average BMI for a man is 26.6, and the average BMI for a woman is 26.5. Oh, I stand corrected. But even after he corrected her, she continued to misrepresent the statistic. How can we say that as a whole, in the U.S., in the West, we're good wives, when 80% of us are overweight? Never and that's Destiny Gigachad, I walk on. Destiny Gigachad, stolen laptop. Destiny Gigachad, neighbor's Wi-Fi. Destiny Gigachad. Nice. the number one thing that men value. There's a lot of room for improvement with Western women. 70% of us are overweight. The average man makes more than the average woman, but the average woman is fatter than the average man. So in the US, the average BMI for a man is 26.6 and the average BMI for a woman is 26.5. Oh, I stand corrected. Hi everyone, this is me in the middle of editing. Pearl got banned off of TikTok, so I've had to go into the internet archive to pull up the timeline for you guys because I can't prove it on the live site. But you can see she's wearing the same top that she talks about the false obesity statistic. And you can see the date here is 314. Destiny corrected her much before that, so just wanted to show proof of that. When I was doing research, I also happened to have made a note about the timeline because I had a feeling that she was regurgitating the statistic even after she was corrected, and it turned out I was correct, so. Just wanted to post the proof in here. Pearl speaks on men valuing attractiveness, purity, and youth, and says in order to get a high value husband or husband at all, you should be those things. Men value purity and youth. Yeah. Purity, youth, beauty. Pearl fails to meet these standards herself despite wanting to get married so badly. 
Apparently, if I want results in life, I have to start talking to boys. Yeah, wife me up if you're, if you're in the London area. Oh. In terms of purity, Pearl's not a virgin. Jesus. In fact, she's so reluctant to say her body count that she's willing to just lie. How many people have you slept with? Do you hear this out? <laughs> no. You ask everybody that. And you don't say your own number? <laughs> what? Um, no, I don't ask everyone. I don't think I've ever asked. <laughs> oh, no, no, I don't even ask body count. Oh, Would you say no. your body count? I, I don't know. No. No. <laughs> no, I don't even ask. Um, I'll always say how many bodies is too many bodies. So I have a question. Would you guys say your body count? Nine. So if it doesn't matter, like, why don't people just say it? She chose to lie because she felt embarrassed. And despite Pearl preaching about the importance of women's chastity, Pearl actually wanted to partake in hookup culture. We but need to invade like, guys, don't Afghanistan to, sleep to, sleep to get back over <laughs> the weapons. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Joe gave the Taliban. Actually wanted to partake in hookup culture. But I swear to God, like guys don't try to sleep with me. Really? <laughs> like, 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 like I swear to God, I've been on a date and I, w I would have been dead and you just never tried. I was like, oh, okay. I've been on a date to a guy didn't even touch me once. Yeah. He touched me once and I'm like, yeah. Hey, I don't really have guys approach me often. It, it could be the clothes. It seems like she barely knew him and wanted to hook up with him, but he didn't want to. So according to Pearl, I guess we shouldn't be taking her advice considering that she can't attract men and even for casual encounters. I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women and I'm kind of like if you can't maintain a relationship why would I take advice from you? Oh no. <laughs> I'm just this is just something I've noticed um it, uh, but I, again, I haven't spent a ton of time in therapy, but then like, and then I'm like, yeah, like why would I take advice from you if you can't maintain a relationship? And she thinks what's holding her back is the fact that she's like six feet tall. I would say if there's one thing that's held me back in dating, it is the height. But I think it's because of her desperation and they can sense it along with her low standards. And you know, if a guy has all the, th like all the things that you look for, he might cheat. Yeah. So how can I, how can I be that mad if he cheats when it's like I picked him? Mm. Would you accept if he's just stepping up but not uh, getting anyone pregnant? Are you're we married? No, you're in a relationship. I think if I'm being truly honest with myself for the right guy, I probably would. How many times? I don't know how many times. But she's basically announcing to the world, hey, I'm Pearl. I'll tolerate cheating. Please marry me. So imagine the kind of men she's attracting. And it seems like her dating life in general just has not gone well. He was older than me. Oh, okay. So he, he did girlfriends before me. Two weeks after, like, we ended it, mm -hmm. he starts dating a new girl. Like, I think he's gonna marry that girl or did, I don't really know. Yeah, yeah I was, like, obsessed. I was so sad because I, I felt like I waited because I was almost, I was a sophomore in college when I lost my virginity. So I was, like, okay. halfway through college. It's late. Yeah. You know it's not about you. It's, I'm, I'm gonna drop something. It's the timing. Well, no, no, no. It actually, it was because he literally like went on to marry the next girl. So it was something, but it's funny because no. the girl, the girl was older than me. So by the manosphere's perspective, like I would have won. Pearl even acknowledges that things don't work out as they do on paper, but she continues to influence people to do immoral pathological behaviors in order to demonize women for clicks and views. In Pearl's world, if the wife puts the husband in question in a bad position and takes this kid away then it's her fault it only takes one time to to ruin a guy's life where she can literally take half and take the kids I like agree. how is he supposed to protect the how is he supposed to protect the children when legally she can take them and she's paid to take them away from yeah. him but that same empathy is nowhere to be found if the wife is put in a bad position by the husband Okay, so then you pick guys that cheat. It says something about your decision making if you become a single mother. If the woman leaves, it's because she's just trying to take the man's money because she's an unreasonable home wrecking gold digger. She can take them and she's paid to take them away from yeah. him. But if a woman decides to make her own money, well, now she's emasculating her husband and causing the divorce. Or one of the number one reasons for divorce is financial. And one of my favorite things about like, kind of like the Tradcon, like Lauren and Brittany and um, one of the, is it, there's like seven different Laurens or Lauras or whatever, um, is you, you, there are some of these, like Brittany does this a lot because Brittany hates these people. Um, there are a lot of these like trad conservative people who f hate like these right leaning like manosphere people. And it's funny to kind of like watch them fight a little bit because um, yeah, holy sh 
I, like, I'm trying to imagine, like, again, and I say this on every single podcast I've gone on, these guys don't believe me, whatever, but if you were to go and talk to, like, a conservative woman, and you would say, like, oh, yeah, like, one in an open relationships are base, like, they're going to look at you like you're insane, you know? Um, it's, it's, it's just funny to watch them fight sometimes, I think. But also, when women out earn men. The irony of Pearl dehumanizing women on her channel is that her entire channel's premise is to focus on the injustices against men and how women aren't empathetic enough to them. And Pearl doesn't like when this happens to her. For example, Pearl went on a podcast and told her story about how her male role model in her life her coach who worked one-on-one -on -one with her since she was 14 turned out to be a groomer. Because I remember saying like, you can tell me stuff you don't, like you don't tell your parents. I remember looking at him like a dad, like for a while, because I saw him so much. He, he told me, before I went to college, like that I was gonna get a bunch of attention from boys because of my butt. And as soon as she turned 18, he tried to sleep with her and shove alcohol down her throat, which by the way, for those of you that don't know, the legal drinking age in America is 21. And he's like, oh, come take a shot at the gym with me. So I think I was 18 or 19 when this happened. And at first I was like, oh no, I'm not trying to drink tonight because it was like my finals week. That was why I was home. But he kept like, going yeah. at it then so then he goes you know like hannah because my first time's hannah yeah. the gym the gym's empty right now we, we could do anything you want i'm like what, what do you mean marcus he texted me <laughs> so he said um he said come back to the gym tonight and i said for what and then he said like um nothing just sucks. the issue i had was he was wait, wait hold on Hello, when it comes to hard drive, hitting delete and empty the cycling in your system does not delete the one zeros on the disk because this is wasted time. Physically, old drives do not have a rewrite limit. New SSDs do have a rewrite life count per rewrite on them. It's why you can use software to recover data when you just do a quick format on a drive, but a long format takes for, I don't, you can't recover deleted data on a hard drive. I'm pretty sure that when you're trying to recover deleted data, all those programs do is they look through your recycle bin to make sure you haven't permanently deleted a file yet. But if you've, I'm pretty sure if you've, if you've deleted a file, if you hit the delete button and then you empty your recycle bin, that file is gone forever, okay? There's no, there's no way that you can recover, you can't recover that file, it's gone. Waiting till girls turned 18 to try to hook up with him. A couple years later, I find out he is going to be a coach at my high school on the track team. And my sister's going to run track. I was like, oh, hell no. But I actually didn't. I didn't get him fired till years later because my mom told me not to. And then in the interview, she goes on to talk about how the Manosphere blamed her for this, even though her coach was double her age. Like I can tell they're from the Manosphere comment. Because I've told this story on like a TikTok before. Yeah. Wait, how old? How old is this video? I wish Brittany was labeling the, the dates more, like in the bottom left of every corner. Or did she say, when is this interview from? Jesus. I think that has to be wrong. They don't recommend selling a computer with a hard drive in it whatsoever. Not even just formatted. Oh. The reason why people will tell you not to sell a hard drive, um, even if it's unformatted, there might be, I think there might be old ways of recovering data off of older hard disks because sometimes the image can burn in to the disk, kind of like how if you leave a TV on for too long, sometimes the image can burn in. So in that case, if you delete a file, it might be like burned into the disk. So you can't actually, there might be a way to recover it there, but I, but I, I would have to look. That's like some weird like FBI level shit. And th it's weird, they blame you, like they put, the, you, the so, 17, 18 year old. Uh, yeah, I can like, see. Why did you put yourself in that situation? Oh, you <clears throat> liked the attention, da, da 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 Pearl has firsthand experience in the consequences of demonizing the other gender. And considering she went through something so terrible, you would is think she friend? would be empathetic. But in is what? Is that your best friend? Which one? That girl, Brittany. Yeah. Your best friend. Yep, she's Your besties now. The new Britney, yeah. Oh my god, the new Britney. Yeah, I've got to yeah, get a gotta replacement. You for that move one. on fast, huh? Yep. Yeah, you do. Email phone. Wait, what are you doing? Streaming. Oh, are you going somewhere? No. Oh. I want to go somewhere. I don't know. You're grabbing like a fucking drink and everything. Jeez. It's a Celsius. It's a. It's a white girl drink. It's white claw. No, it's a, it's white claw. Drink. You know, white mouths. It's like knocko, kind of. Oh, isn't that a drug? No, caffeine. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, how do you, do you know how to pronounce that one German guy that was like propaganda for the hmm? Third Reich? What is he? How do you pronounce this guy's name? Hitler? No, the other one. Uh, Joseph Goebbels. Oh yeah, you can say that. Goebbels. You can say 
No, because that's like your last name. That weird, it's that weird thing. Gibbons. Like the, you yeah. Like your last name. Yeah, you or whatever. Gibbons. Ugh. Say Gibbons. I say Gerbils. Not Gerbils. 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 Gibbons. Joseph Gibbons. You can do it. Say it. Gibbons. Gerbils. <laughs> okay, next time. Bye. I have a master's degree in computer security and do digital forensics for my job. When you delete a file, the hard drive doesn't overwrite the data with ones and zeros. The operating system just marks the space that it used to occupy as free so it can be overwritten later by new data. You have a master's degree in computer security? Is that even a real thing? Computer security? What do you think the delete button does? If you want to move the file or whatever, you can, I don't know why, you, what you guys are talking about. <laughs> you guys are wild in chat today. Instead, she's so profit driven that if somebody else told her this same story, she would side with the predator. She seems to give no nuance and- Okay, let's do it. Okay, new text document too. I'm gonna name this, okay? <clears throat> File.txt, delete. If I wanna use a file recovery program, it can find it because it'll go through the recycle bin. But if, once I empty the recycle bin, It's wiped from the drive. That file is gone. There's absolutely no way to recover the file at this point. It's completely gone. It isn't, there's a way to recover the file? Oh, hold on, maybe. Let me try Control Z. To undelete? No, you can't. It's gone, dude. Do you think the entire- Do you think it's funny one guy in chat with your fake HDD takes? Do you think it's funny, uh, Do you think I hope you wake up late and miss your flight to one guy, fuck. Do you think the entire data recovery industry just goes through people's recycle bins? Basically, right? People never empty the recycle bins. That shit is fucking huge. And I'm pretty sure that if it stays in the recycle bin for long enough, the files will get like renamed or some shit. Um, and then like you just, yeah, people don't know it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of data recovery search on that. Or if it's like an image that's burnt in after a long time. Okay, let's back to this. No defense of women, no matter what the situation is, even if what happened happened when they were children. I'm pretty sure social media is like some of the most damaging stuff for young girls in middle school and high school because of how much like information they're bombarded with in terms of beauty standards and how they look. But you guys are like, well, but Instagram helps them get flown out to Dubai. So I think like <laughs> it does. You know, it's like totally, totally disconnected from like the real world. I mean, it also lets you catfish the hell out of men <laughs> like with these freaking Instagram filters. It's based mm -hmm. on the media that they consume and the mm -hmm. thing images around them. Like that's it's just like absolutely true. Freaking who? Like what happened to the accountability? She's holding the kids more accountable than she She's holding the men for not checking if it's a real person or not. Maybe it's because she's biased and she got catfished. I don't know. So yeah, clearly Pearl has no issues holding even little girls accountable over men. And when it comes to women, Pearl will say things like, you shouldn't talk about the exceptions, only talk about the rule. You know, some people mm -hmm. might get married and the husband dies mm -hmm. and they become a single mother. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, right, there's... But we're not talking about exceptions, we're talking about the rule. Are the majority of single mothers widows? No. But that changes at Pearl's convenience. You can't talk about nuances unless it demonizes women. You've never heard of cases Everyone where women knows don't that the, the data recovery industry just uses their direct link to the NSA to recover data. True. Kid. No, Earlier, you said never, we weren't going to talk never. about exceptions. You want to talk right. about the rules. So don't okay. give me the hide and go seek no, with the kid. I mean, How often do you think a mom is hiding the kid from the I, husband? Give me a percentage. Um, I don't know. Before on her <laughs> channel, she actually used to be more nuanced and actually criticized the manosphere for not acknowledging exceptions. You know, I know that one girl that makes more money than her husband or what, whatever the exception is to the rule. Um, and we see it, I think, more often than the manosphere really gives credit to. I think in general, men don't want to date single mothers, but I know a lot of single mothers that got remarried. She was even willing to have her virgin friends come on the show to explain their perspective and why they wouldn't sleep with someone with a high body count like. Article on how it works, Destiny, you need to learn. Why would I read a Slate article on computer forensics? I'm gonna be going to like a reputable place like Tom's Hardware or Reddit before I read Slate on computer stuff the host of Fresh and Fit. I'm probably gonna have a couple friends that I 
waited till they were married to have on my podcast to actually talk about what they look for in guys. Then only a month later, she starts regurgitating Manosphere talking points. If you get married and it doesn't work out, like women <laughs> can and will take all of your money. Pearl doesn't like when you go, but men in response to her. And whenever we talk about where the women need to improve, we always need to point the finger at the men. But the reason people go, but what about men, is because she doesn't seem to address the other half of the equation. Women haven't single-handedly made men cheat, cause obesity, or cause divorce, but Pearl will take it and spin it in a way to where women are the blame and men don't take any accountability for it. For example, 80% of women initiate divorce is something she will say in order to blame women. But women initiating divorce doesn't necessarily mean that they were in the wrong. If it were the other way around, I just know that Pearl would spin it as men are leaving modern women because they're low value. I mean, she already does this with passport bros. Are Western women typically known as good wives? Are they sought after all over the world? Or are men getting their passports and going elsewhere? It's not 100% of the woman's fault, and if you don't address even the 10% of the time where it's the man's fault, then you're not really solving Yo, bro, anything. Bro, so fragile, she's he some dumb shit, and now he's gonna meme about it for three days ain't the way. <sighs> what do you, wait, what do you even think I said initially was wrong? I'm, hold on, I, how did this even start? Obviously, I know how deleting a file on a hard drive works, you retards. How do you get trolled on this for two hours? What is wrong with you guys? What do you guys think I said initially that was even wrong? I literally just tried to recover a file on my laptop the other day. Why would you think I think that deleting a file permanently deletes it? I'm so curious how this, where did this, where did this even start at? <laughs> well, I'm so curious. What was, what was the start of this? Such a bad troll? I don't know, bro. There's like a hundred people that are apparently all year one comp size students that are really aggressively talking about how file deletion works in Windows. Because you trolled that one chatter with Dan that asked yesterday. You were trolling yesterday and somebody took it too seriously. What did I even say yesterday? Lemeo, good one. You were memeing with Dan how it would be a huge security risk if you could just recover files. <laughs> It is a security risk you can cover files. That's why some people recommend that you either destroy a hard drive or there are certain programs you can get if you want to be ultra hardcore. Although I don't know why the, anybody, who the fuck would ever do this, just buy a new drive. There are certain programs you can buy or that you can download that will rewrite a drive like 30 or 40 times, I think, with, with randomized data or whatever. I don't know if this is true or not, but I remember reading a long time ago that it might be possible to recover a file that's only been overwritten one time because there's still like, um, like a magnetic memory to like a prior bit that was recorded in any space and theoretically the FBI can find a file that's only been overwritten one time and like through very careful forensic analysis can find older files. I don't know if that's actually possible or not. I think I read that on a post before. I don't know if it's true, but, there, but because of that, there are some people that will give you programs that will take like a, a space on the disk and it'll rewrite that space 30 different times to make sure there's absolutely no like memory whatsoever. But like regardless, just like destroy a drive. Seven times as NSA standard. I'm trying to think of what the program was. Program to... Um, <clears throat> securely delete files. I, th I felt like 30 passes was like the most insane level on this, but yeah. I don't I don't know how many times, was it D-band? Oh, D-band, yeah. The Gutman bypass method uses 32 passes. There you go. There should be an autism flare for everyone who thought you were serious. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I got a lot of new fans in here. This is your best computer troll ever. Destiny reviewing, reviewing Alienware computers. Oh, I don't even know. I can't watch. This is like a 12 year old video, bro. God damn it. I can never talk about this. Okay. Because she's making them mad about problems while giving them no solutions, and it's not really helping anyone. And as she makes things worse, she just gets to sit there and collect money off of people's negative emotions. Pearl 
Carol asserts that her focus on addressing women exclusively is due to the fact that they're never held accountable. Because she's holding women solely responsible for every issue, she's just perpetuating the issue that she claims to be trying to solve. If she had a more balanced consideration of everyone, then perhaps she would actually get something solved. She does this a lot by misrepresenting statistics in order to poorly portray women. For example, Pearl talks about how 20% of men aren't even the father of their children. And they say that 20% of men are raising a kid that's not theirs. That's why they don't want a promiscuous woman. They're that, afraid they're going to pass. Their is that actually true? That sounds really high. 20%? I guess it's possible. The resources onto the... 20% of men raising another child. Leave out these ones. The number is 3.85%. This is a men's health article. Another review of 19 studies by a group of Liverpool backs this up, putting the figure at 3.7%. What does she get 20%? Thirty percent of men, not the father. Paternity. This is an often misunderstood statistic provided by some paternity test labs regarding the percentage of paternity tests where they now thought about most paternity tests support that one third of the paternity tests having negative result of all the possible fathers to take a paternity test. Thirty percent. Remember, this is one third of men who have a reason to take a paternity test, not one third of all men. What if she got it from here? The wrong. Um, onto a kid that's not there. Well, unknowing or knowing. Not unknowing. Not knowing. So how do they get the statistic? I don't know. It's DNA test. test. Much like the feminist. Oh, she did pull Pearl it from that. Oh my God. She really thinks one out of five men? How could you be that retarded? She thinks one in five men are raising a child that's not theirs and they don't even know it? Um, onto a kid that's not theirs. Well, unknowing or knowing? Unknowing. Uh, not knowing. So how do they get the statistic? I don't know. It's DNA test. Much like the feminist that Pearl criticizes, I've never seen her cite where she gets her data from. And that's the same thing as lying in the science world because she's making it impossible to even fact check her. I have to just guess what study she's talking oh, about. And I think she's basing it on this 1999 of the report. paternal test, what we just found. It's yeah. by the American Association of Blood Banks. And it's over two decades old, which is way too old for a study like this to be relevant. And the 20% claim that Pearl made doesn't actually represent the population. It's actually much lower. They were testing men that were already not sure if they were the dad, and getting meaning paternal that tests. the study was biased. In order for it to not be biased, it would have to be randomized or tested at birth. The vast differences in non-paternity rates across different populations is also not taken into account. This is relevant information, especially considering that Pearl's podcast is based in London, even though she's from America. So how are we supposed to know where she's even talking about? Depending on what country you're looking at, the percentages are all different and significantly lower than what Pearl was saying. Another example of Pearl misrepresenting data in order to demonize women is her saying that women primarily divorce men for money. I want to get married. Of course I want to get married. But like, if I was a guy, I would have a really hard time with it. And you could say it's the type of woman, but 50% of marriages end in divorce. Women leave the majority of the time. I don't think it's the type of woman. I think it's that they're paying women to leave. Or one of the number one reasons for divorce is financial and also when women out earn men. But the top reason for divorce on every site that I've checked didn't have that as even the top four. And while I was researching this, I actually found data citing that women who divorced in the previous 12 months were more likely than recently divorced men to be in poverty, 20% compared to 11% respectively. True. If I were doing what Pearl does, I could easily utilize that data to say that 80% of women are leaving men because men can't satisfy women. But hey, at least I'm telling you where I got the data from, unlike her. I would have thought someone as rich as her would have the resources to be able to check the statistics she's saying, especially considering she's on her dad's dime. No. Number one, I'm sorry I'm not a brokey. My dad yells at me for accounting every month and I have to like organize like business expenses versus personal. Um, so my dad does yell at me when I pull out cash when you can't see what you spend it on. Pearl reminds me of Pearl from SpongeBob asking her dad, Mr. Krabs, for money. <laughs> How much is all this costing me? Here's the receipt. <laughs> 
I ought to... Oh, Daddy, you got me everything I wanted. She also reminds me of Mr. Krabs' daughter because he wants her to be a star and he's paying her way to do so. Being a little YouTuber is tough. I'm really tired of being broke, Dad. Quarter mile. I can't mooch off of you forever. My little girl is finally a star. Give me a K, are you? I'm sure that Pearl understands the real world struggles of the average person from her 10 bedroom mansion. You guys wanna, you want the house tour? Jesus. But clearly there is one thing that money cannot buy, and that thing is taste. This video is from Pearl's channel called Wife School. In the first episode, oh, she Allie. and Allie, known as Real Femme Sapien on YouTube, meet up to improve on Pearl's fashion, along with a male stylist who is supposed to be helping Pearl attract a husband by improving her outfits. So let's take a look at some of the outfits he puts her in. Perfect for a night out on the town. I'll do the full twirl. <laughs> this dress looks like a trash bag. It's unflattering on her because it's showcasing her stomach, which is not what she should be highlighting. Not only that, but the black is washing her out, making her look very drained, especially considering the fact that she normally doesn't wear makeup. Going without makeup is a personal choice and it's fine, but if you're gonna do that, you need to know your color palette or you will look even more tired and sickly when you wear the wrong colors. I'm going to go ahead and explain a little bit of color theory to you guys. <laughs> color Christ. season is a system that utilizes color theory to categorize where each person falls under in order to easily find out what colors look good on them. It's based on how their skin's undertones interact with other colors, and that involves how light or dark their skin is relative to the hair and eye color. If you have warm undertones in your skin, you'll look more yellow with green veins in your wrist. And if you're cool tone, you'll look more pinkish or reddish with blue veins on your wrist. If you have a warm undertone, you should wear warm colors. If you have cool undertones, you're curious, cool there's like, I'm pretty sure there are whole apps that on your phone that you can like take pictures of yourself and it'll like automatically give you like suggested color palettes for clothes you wanna wear and shit, by the way colors will suit you best. You have to have a trained eye to be able to see it in some cases, but Pearl is cool toned as you can see with her pink flush in her skin. Pearl is either a light summer because of her cool tone coloration, or she would be a light spring because it's right next to light summer in the color wheel. It's a little hard to tell on the internet, but I know for sure she's on that side of the color wheel. If you look at someone and the first thing you see is their outfit's color instead of their own natural coloration and features, then you're wearing the wrong colors. The stylist doesn't apply this knowledge or even utilize basic color theory, and instead he takes her to a cheap, fast fashion store like Zara. If he were actually good at his job, he would not be making these mistakes. If money were an issue, which clearly for Pearl it's not, there are better budget-friendly places you could go to for higher quality clothes. For example, go thrifting. But yeah, clearly Pearl doesn't need to go thrifting. He could have just taken her to a higher end mall or a department store. Honestly, he just does her dirty the entire time. That's super cool. That looks really nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What kind of, where would I go with this outfit? I think, you know, I think that could be an afternoon. I think that could be an evening outfit. Jesus. I think mm -hmm. you, could, you could go out in Shoreditch wearing that. You could go to Canary Wharf to one of the bars down there. Mm. Meet some nice high value guy. He looks at her with a straight face, telling her she's going to meet a high value guy in this. What, what is, what's going on here? Wait, who is the guy? I'm curious. Outfit. Oh, it'll look nice going out for errands and having a nice dinner. He's just talking out of his ass. So what do we rate this? One to 10. I reckon it's a high eight. Like, Destiny, I, on Erudite's stream yesterday, Real Femme Sapien mentioned that she was the one who got the stylist. It was just a dude that seemed like he had good style, but he, he had no idea how to do women fashion at all. Oh, gotcha. I don't know how a stylist can honestly rate these outfits so high. Oh, that's, now it, now it's good. Now it's Spin, good. spin, not too fast, okay. <laughs> He must think that she's a dumpster because he keeps putting her in trash bags. 
because he's done it now like three or four times in this video and he's not highlighting any of the flattering parts of her body which defeats the entire purpose of having a stylist help you there are several different body shapes but for pearl she holds most of her weight proportionately in her arms and in her stomach and that should have been taken into consideration when he was dressing her. Regardless if she loses weight, her proportions will stay the same relative to her other body parts. You can bring balance back to the body by drawing the attention to the most attractive body parts and away from the least attractive ones using color, patterns, texture. But of course, he would know that if he actually knew what the hell he was doing as a stylist. It is honestly just so frustrating watching him not look smacks her. In this outfit, the skirt does not work. Pearl could have put on some jeans with a wider cut at the bottom to balance her upper, heavier half, or she could have put on a skirt that was A-line, high-waisted, and above the knee, but in middle of the thigh, not too short. Would have done the trick to bring attention to her legs and away from her stomach. Why I'm pulling it? in the back because it's too big. That is, though, <laughs> size aside, that is, that's pretty cool, but that is proper, like, New Year's Eve party type. Yes. Should I wear yes. for New Year's Eve get it fitted? Early yes. Yeah. Yeah. You see how he literally highlights her stomach with bright green sparkles? I, I can't take this anymore. And then he has the audacity. He must got it from Pearl. The audacity to suggest for her to tailor a Zara dress that won't survive one wash. Literally go watch a fashion channel. Go watch Ali Art on YouTube and then come back to us when you actually know how to do your job. And it's not just her frumpy style that's preventing her from looks maxing. It's also her presentation with her hair. She's not bothering to style it and many people are even commenting about it under her TikTok telling her to brush her hair. Girl's hair just needs a haircut with some texturing to give it volume so that it's not so stuck and flat to her head. Her hair is very manageable. How is she going to teach other women how to attract a husband when she doesn't even put the minimal effort in her own appearance? No, I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women and I'm kind of like if you can't maintain a relationship why would I take advice from you? <laughs> so if she wants to be taken seriously she should care about her overall presentation including her fashion, hairstyle, her attitude, and bodily self-care. This situation is so deeply embarrassing and desperate she has no business telling other women how to attract a husband i wanted to give pearl credit for trying to improve on her fashion but she makes it really hard to do so when even months after this video she continues to show up on camera with her hair undone unbrushed stuck to her head no volume and having naughty stains on her clothing so i'll just have to instead give pearl credit for trying to learn how to cook on her wife's school channel because it appears she does not know how to. She hasn't been able to attract the men she wants to hook up with her. She hasn't been able to attract a boyfriend and she doesn't even live by her own standards about presentation. You know who else doesn't adhere to their own standards uh -oh. and the gender they're attracted to isn't attracted to them? Male feminist. Pearl reminds me a lot of a male feminist. She uses a lot of their tactics, such as misrepresenting statistics, but unfortunately, we still live in a broken system that says that my work as a white male is worth 46 cents more to the dollar than an equally qualified Hispanic woman. Pearl is Jesus. willing to accept degrading behavior like being cheated on because she is desperate to attract men. Yeah, that male feminist thing. I've known a few that were real creeps. They put these women on a platform and worship these women and they don't run fast. They can't pick things up. They're not attractive. So they try to, they're little weasels. They're trying to find another way in. Pearl doesn't know how to attract men with her social skills, her appearance, or with skills like cooking. What percent of women have cookbooks? It's probably because we have the internet for recipes now, Pearl. But yeah, basically <laughs> I think that Pearl has had to resort to these desperate behaviors because she does not embody what men are attracted to. So she has to do things like Jesus. agree to men cheating on her and degrading herself in order to get a man. It's very desperate. 
I am not like those other guys. <laughs> And back to her business really quick in regard to her tactics. Her tactics remind me a lot of legacy media in how she fear mongers people in order to make money. I have watched a lot of Pearl's content and I've never seen her give a point to the other side. There is a huge lack of nuance when it comes to her channel. In fact, anytime someone on Pearl's show wants to give nuance, she will not let them do so unless it benefits men. If we spent this podcast talking about the exceptions, we'd be here all day. We didn't even get nowhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, there would be no point in having a conversation. We still need to mention them. Yeah, why? There's no, no we don't. This is my show. <laughs> and she will go as far as to bait her guest into giving more polarizing, extreme answers. Whose beauty standards are higher, men or women? I think it depends. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, I want to make a rule. No, it depends. <laughs> Pick one and tell me uh, why. Pearl has gained the entirety of her 1 million subscribers from her fear mongering, lies, and black and white thinking over just this past year. Pearl teaches men to act like hyper selfish sociopaths, luring them down the dark path of loneliness, unhealthy relationships, and broken homes. Men taking her advice will result in the same situations that she criticizes women for. Pearl also doesn't teach women to have healthy boundaries, also leading them to the same fate. Taking Pearl's advice will reward you in a worldview as warped as hers with black and white thinking in our grayscale reality. Yeah. Like, you're going to be okay with what he does. He's going to be okay with what you do. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with masculinity or femininity or anything like that. That's just like two adults having a relationship, figuring out what the boundaries are. You guys talk about things that are basic relationship norms, but you like frame them in the most toxic way possible. I don't understand. If you do take one piece of advice away from Pearl, let it be this. No, I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single <laughs> women. And I'm kind of like, if you can't maintain a relationship, why would I take advice from you? <laughs> this video took so long to make. I have never researched so much for a video before. So if you do like the content and appreciate me researching her, watching her content for two weeks, consider supporting me on Locals or on Patreon because I am community funded. Thank you so much to my producers on Patreon. And also, if you guys haven't noticed yet, I have deleted the tweet on my Twitter, so I should be back on Twitter when this video comes out. I figured that I could do more good on the platform by being on it than not being on it for now. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Jesus Christ.